In response to the economic fallout from COVID-19, leaders in Washington are laying groundwork for another relief package. While many people are hurting from the loss of jobs or previous incomes, some of the wealthiest people in the country have been doing fairly well. That's part of the message in a report by Americans for Tax Fairness in the Institute for Policy Studies. To tell us about the report is a co-author and researcher with Program on Inequality and the Common Good, Omar Ocampo. Thank you very much for being with us, Omar. Uh, thank you for having me. Omar, what about this? I, I mean, it, it, it seems strange uh, to hear uh, that some billionaires, I guess, are doing even better than before. I mean, what's going on out there? Yeah, so um, so I would like to explain the, the genesis of the study. So uh, Forbes released this annual report in April. And we found their assertion that the rich um, were not immune to the pandemic and actually lost a lot of wealth to be quite interesting. Um, and at first glance, that was true. And uh, but we decided to, you know, to track their wealth and see uh, how it would trend, um, you know, throughout the pandemic. And we've noticed that, um, you know, uh, their wealth uh, and net worth has gone up uh, dramatically. And I think one of the reasons why is because. Um, you know the stock market and the regular economy is that there's actually a disconnect there and that uh, the federal reserve is uh is basically guaranteeing a floor for investors so the fed has lowered interest rates uh, they're purchasing billions of dollars in corporate bonds um they're you know doing trillion dollar bailouts so this is boosting investor confidence and it helps explain um you know why uh, things are trending upwards for the, the billionaire class now, of course, another thing that, that doesn't hurt the billionaires is, is uh, the nature of the legislation in the last relief package. A lot of good things in that package, maybe, but I guess you would call them loopholes too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's a uh, billion dollars in uh, tax cuts uh, for people who are uh, multimillionaires and billionaires. And I think um, this is actually, this actually gives the state less resources to fight the health and economic crisis. And I think the logic of the tax cuts, uh, tax cuts passed during the pandemic is that it will stimulate the economy. Um, but I think this doesn't necessarily make sense because um, the, the people who need cash are the working and middle classes. So if anything with these uh, you know, tax cuts, the rich will probably only spend a small percentage of their ta tax cut. So it won't cure the economy. So uh, I would recommend that the, the policy should uh, Put money directly in the hands of consumers. So uh, what does that mean, putting more money in the hands of consumers? Yeah, so something like the, the what we saw a couple months ago with the, the $1,200 uh, stimulus check, um, because it gives them material resources and it gives them material security. And in order, and they're, more, they're also more likely to spend all of that money. So therefore, there's velocity in the economy, so, the, so things would be better off. Um, you know, uh, you know, with the, you know the billionaires because they don't have they don't, they're not cash strapped, so they're more likely to put uh, the the their their cash in uh, you know in savings. Uh, so so basically, we want like direct uh, payments to uh, you know uh, the working and middle classes, so they can you know uh, you know use that money in order to secure their uh, material interests. Now, I, I I've read so far that some of the Republicans in the Senate. Uh, they want to be less generous uh, with stimulus checks, at least confining them to people uh, with a higher cap, excuse me, a lower cap on the income, maybe something like 40000 a year. Uh, I imagine those people are the ones who are really hurting. So why not go with that new kind of cap? I think that the logic of the Republican Party is that, you know, um, they don't want people to, uh, you know, be home and not work because uh, you know if you just give them cash, it'll disincentivize work. So they're kind of uh, looking at it as like a freeloader problem. I, I think those uh, of uh, you know that I think that's pure speculation, and I think it's unfounded. I think that uh, you know in in the context of a pandemic, the best thing that you can do is basically to pay people to you know um, to give people cash so they can stay home until uh, things get better. Well, of course, I, I also know about one of the uh, tricky things around caps is that a cap that's reasonable in one part of the country uh, might not be so reasonable in an area like Boston, where the, the cost of living is considerably higher. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and this is also seen, uh, you know, with, uh, with rents and why, um, you know, we may be entering, uh, you know, an eviction crisis um, um, in, in the, in the long term. So, uh, so obviously some, you know, like, let's say, you know, $40,000 a year might be good and, you know, in in the South, but like you said, in, in, in Massachusetts, New York, DC, or even Chicago, it's, it's, it's not enough to, uh, to live on. Well, well one thing uh, we've heard uh, more than once before is, is that extending unemployment benefits can be a disincentive for working and this is something we've heard mainly from the Republican leaders uh, and they can also say that recently the uh, the average uh, slope in uh, unemployment benefit applications has been at least flattening uh, but um, what about those two arguments especially in light of some of the recent things happening with the virus being spread around the country yeah I mean I don't I don't buy the the argument that um, um, that basically giving people, uh, you know, a cash transfer was somehow disincentivized work. Um, I think most people, uh, you know, they find value value in work, and they 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 would want to, um, you know, to you know be productive. Um, I think the I think I think the main issue is ideological. Um, I, I think that the the Republicans have this ideology that, um, you know, if you just uh, uh, you know, let things trickle to the top, of the, uh, or at least give the benefits to the top, as like you know, lowering lowering the tax rates, that it will it will trickle down. I think that's uh, completely unfounded. I guess the second part here was that things might have been changing on the ground uh, lately as well, because mm -hmm. some of these arguments they go back a few weeks. Now we've got all these reports about the virus spreading, and what are really a lot of red states? Maybe their senators are thinking differently. Yeah, and I think that they're thinking differently because a lot of them are considering closing down again, and um, and in order to provide uh, economic security and material security for their citizens, uh, a new stimulus has to be taken into consideration. And I think that you know the the I think this is a, a, an opportunity for uh, Democrats or progressive to uh, you know basically uh, take a you know uh, from an ideological point of view take advantage of this moment and just you know, and basically uh, do away with like a neoliberal ideology. So um, yeah, and then the current pandemic is, is showing that the, you know, the, the basically the consensus of the past 40 years has not been working. Well, of course, uh, the Democrats control the House of Representatives. They had their own relief package, the HEROES Act. Uh, one of the things I think that you like in that was what they want to do with Medicaid. Can you tell me a little bit about that and why it's so important? Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with the, the Medicaid aspect of the, the HEROES Act. So I wouldn't be able to answer that one. But uh, of course, the other thing that you must be concerned about is the tax cuts, the money that yeah. I guess could end up going to billionaires. If you were to close the loophole, how, how much would that help? Yeah. So, uh, so I mean, one of uh, our policy proposals is, uh, you know, to is to pro impose an emergency millionaire income tax. So people who are making over two million dollars a year, which is basically one percent of the population, uh, if we were to put this, you know, basically close that loophole for the, that that tax breaks at people who are millionaires, if we were able to close that loophole, we will be able to raise six hundred billion dollars in ten years. And if we can combine this with like other types of uh, you know taxation, uh, whether it's a, a, a progressive estate tax or a wealth tax, it would uh, it would generate a lot of revenue for the state, and it will help expand opportunity by funding education, healthcare, and and maybe other new initiatives like the Green New Deal. What do we know about how much the Cures Act has helped people so far? I would say that it has not helped uh, people uh, that well. Um, again, the, the unemployment claims are still going up in Massachusetts. Uh, in the, at the time of a report, it was over 900,000 and, and currently it's over uh, a million. So uh, I don't think that um, it, it's helping much. I think uh, wealth is concentrating uh, even further. And I uh, and you know our we, our research says that you know this is terrible for democracy because the ultra rich will then deploy their wealth for political uh, politically for economic reasons. Um, so uh, I think that 
you know, the, there was a, a, you know, a one time $1,200 payment, but, you know, that was spent within a minute. And, um, and meanwhile, the, the, you know, corporations, uh, you know, there's trillion dollar bailouts for them.